Hi, today we're going to be learning about multiplying and dividing integers. We're going to start off by looking at multiplying integers. So we're going to learn how to do examples similar to this, where you've got something like positive 2 multiplied by negative 3. Okay, so now when you are multiplying and dividing integers, where you have positives and negatives, it can become a little bit confusing. So Dottie is going to be helping us out again in this lesson, just like she did in the last couple of lessons. So here's Dottie, and she's going to be helping us out on our number line again. So over here, she is on her number line, and let's just make this big so you can see what's happening here. Okay, so first of all, we've got positive 2 multiplied by negative 3. Now these two integers tell us what direction she's facing and what direction she's jumping and how far she jumps and how many jumps she makes. So the first number over here is telling us what direction she's facing. If this number is positive, she is facing the positive direction. So like you can see over here, she's facing the positive direction. And then the actual number, the um, now in this case is number two, tells us how many jumps she is making. Okay, then over here we have got our second number. This tells us what direction she jumps. Does she jump forwards or backwards? If it's a negative number, she jumps backwards. If it's a positive number, she jumps forwards. So in this case, it's negative, so she's jumping backwards. And then the number itself over here tells us how far she jumps. So in this case, she's jumping, her, each jump is for three, like this. Okay, so in this case, she is facing forwards because that's positive. She's facing the positive direction. If this was negative, she would be facing the negative direction. And she is making two jumps. And this number tells us that she is jumping backwards instead of forwards. So she's jumping backwards. And the three tells us how far she's jumping. So each of her jumps is three. It's a distance of three. So using this, we're able to say, okay, so if she is jumping two jumps, She's facing forwards, she's jumping backwards, and each jump has a distance of three. That means she will end up over here on negative six. So that is what we will get for that example over there. Okay, so now let's have a look at, at a couple more examples. So in this one, we have got positive 3. Now remember the first number tells us how far she jumped, or oh, it tells us what direction she's uh, jumped facing rather. So she is facing the positive direction and she is making in this case three jumps. The first number tells us how many jumps she makes. So she's facing the positive direction and she's making three jumps. Then over here we have got what direction she jumps. So she's jumping forwards because it's positive and she is jumping the distance each time is two. So she's going to go forward, she's facing the positive direction, and she's going to jump forwards three times a distance of two. So that's one, two, three. So she will end up on six. Positive six. Okay, so now let's put it back again and let's have a look at the next one. So here we've got a positive again, so she's facing the positive direction and she is making three jumps. And this time she's jumping backwards, so she's going to be going in a negative direction, and she is jumping a distance of two each time. So we're going to go one, two, three, and this time she ends up on negative six. Okay, now for the next one, we go back to zero again, and she is now facing the negative direction. So let's make her face the negative direction quickly. Okay, and now she is still making three jumps and she's this time jumping forwards, but because she's facing the negative direction, when she jumps forwards, she's going to move in the negative direction and she's jumping a distance of two each time. So we're going to go one, two, three. So she's going to end up on negative six again. And then for the last one, she's still facing the negative direction and she's still making three jumps, and each jump is still a distance of two, but this time she's jumping backwards. So we're going to go one, two, three, and now she ends up on the positive six. 
Okay, so let's just have a look at what happened over here. When she was facing the positive direction and she jumped forwards, she went in, a, in the positive direction. When she was facing the positive direction and she jumped backwards, she went in the negative direction. When she was facing the negative direction and she jumped forwards, she moved in the negative direction. And when she was facing the negative direction, but she jumped backwards, she ended up moving in the positive direction. So let's just do a quick recap of all of that for ourselves now. Okay, so we can say that when she was, when the first integer was positive, that meant that she was facing the positive direction. So we had a positive multiplied by a positive. So if she's facing the positive direction and she jumps forwards, then she moves in the positive direction. So we end up with something that is positive. If she is facing the positive direction, but she jumps backwards, so the second integer is negative, then she, she ends up moving in the negative direction. So when we have a positive multiplied by a negative, we end up with a negative. When she was facing the negative direction and she jumped forwards, then we ended up with her going in the negative direction. So we end up with a negative. And finally, when she was facing the negative direction and she jumped backwards, then she ended up going in the positive direction. So when you have a positive num multiplied by another positive, which is what you used to, you, you've always multiplied positives by positives all the way through school so far. So you, when you had a positive multiplied by a positive, you end up with a positive answer, and that's normal. When you have a positive multiplied by a negative, it's like she's facing forwards, or, she, or she's facing the positive direction, but she's jumping backwards, then we end up with a negative answer because she ends up moving in the negative direction. So a positive multiplied by a negative will give you a negative answer. When you have a negative multiplied by a positive, so she's facing the negative direction and she's jumping forwards, we end up with a negative answer. And then, because she ends up moving in the negative direction. And then the last one, when we have a negative multiplied by a negative, so she's facing the negative direction and she's jumping backwards, she ends up moving in the positive direction, so we end up with a positive answer. So a positive times a positive is positive. A positive times a negative is negative. A negative times a positive is also negative. Now remember, multiplication is commutative, so that makes sense. If these are the opposite way around, we should still end up with the same thing. So a negative and a negative answer both come from positive times a negative and negative times positive. We've just switched the signs around there. Okay, and then over here, a negative times a negative gives you a positive because she's She's facing the negative direction, but she's moving in the positive direction because she's jumping backwards. Okay, so that is, uh, the, those are the rules that we're going to be using while we're doing these examples. Okay, so now let's go and do another example using what we have learned here. So in this example, we have got negative 3 times positive 9. Now you see that there's no sign in between. When there's nothing in between brackets or nothing between a number and a bracket, so I could also have written this without the brackets in front of the negative 3 as well. So I could have written this as negative 3 and then positive 9 like that. I could have written it without the plus. So there are a few different ways of writing this. When there's nothing in or in between, then it automatically, automatically means times. Okay, so this, I don't need to write the time sign, I can just leave it blank, and it means times. Okay, the only time we can't do that is if we just have two numbers next to each other. So if I want to write 2 times 3, I can't just do that, because then it looks like 23. So uh, over there, we can't just leave it out. But if you've got between brackets or between something, a, a number or something and a bracket, you don't have to write that multiplication sign, because there's nothing else that can really be confused with. Okay, so that automatically means times. Right, so now what we're going to do first is we're going to identify our sign. So I, over here I've got a negative times a positive. Now remember over here we said that a negative times a positive will give me a negative answer because she's facing the 
the negative direction and she's jumping forwards which is in the negative direction so we're going to end up with a negative answer so the first thing you do is identify your sign okay so over here I can say number one my first task is to identify the sign plus or minus. I want to know, is it going to be positive or negative? So to do that, I just take those signs that I have over there. If there's nothing written, it means that it's a plus, okay? But if it's negative, they have to show the, the minus. And I see, in this case, I've got one minus and one plus. That gives me a negative answer. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to identify or figure out what the product is of the absolute value. So we multiply the absolute values. Okay, and remember the absolute values are the numbers, the number part. So over here, I multiply the three and the nine, and that is going to give me 27. Okay, so over here I had my minus and my plus giving me a minus and here I had the 3 times 9 giving me 27. So when you are multiplying integers there are two parts to what you have to do. The first thing you do is you identify your sign by looking at the signs of the integers that are being multiplied together and the second thing you're going to do is you're going to multiply the absolute values of the integers that you're multiplying together to see what the number part of it is going to be. So our answer for this one is negative 27. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do by yourself. Now there are quite a few here, there's 10 questions altogether, but these should not take very long. So I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this example.
Okay, you should be done with that hopefully by now. So let's go through each of those examples. So for question A, we had negative 10 times negative 5. So the first thing we're going to do is identify is it positive or negative. If I'm multiplying a negative by a negative, that gives me a positive answer. Now when I'm writing it, I don't need to write the plus because there's nothing else in front of it. If there was something else in front of it, I would have to write the plus. But because there isn't, I don't need to write the plus. Then I go and I multiply the absolute value. So I've got 10 times 5 and that gives me 50. So my answer for that one is positive 50. The next one, I've got 3 times negative 8. So in this case, my, the first thing I'm going to do, my sign, I've got positive times negative, that gives me a negative answer. Then 3 times 8 is 24. So you should have got tw negative 24 for question B. Question C, I've got a negative times a positive. Again, that gives me a negative answer. And remember, we don't have to say that we don't have to show the time sign. It still means multiplication. So I've got a negative times a positive, and that gives me a negative. And then two times seven is fourteen. So you should have got for that one negative fourteen. For question D, we've got negative one times negative sixteen. Negative times negative is positive. Don't need to write the positive though. And then I can go on to the the multiplication of the absolute value. So 1 times 16 is just 16. Okay, then over here we have got positive 2 times negative 12. So a positive times a negative is negative. And 6 times 12 is 72. So you should have got for that one negative 72. Then for question F, I've got negative 5 times negative 7. A negative times a negative is positive, so I don't need to write the plus. And then 5 times 7 is 35. Like that. Then I've got negative 4 times negative 9. Okay, negative times negative again is positive. And 4 times 9 is 36. Then question H, I've got a negative times a positive. That gives me a negative answer. And then 7 times 8 is 56. Question I, I've got a positive multiplied by a negative, which gives me a negative answer. 6 times 6 is 36. And then the last one, negative 4 times negative 11, a positive answer because negative times negative is positive, and 4 times 11 is 44. So that's what you should have got for each of those different questions. Okay. Now I want to just give you a little tip. When you are multiplying or working with integers like this, sometimes you will see that they'll just have a minus in front of a bracket like this. So you might have a minus and then negative 5 in brackets. If you, oh, sorry, let me make that like that so you can see. Okay, so you've got a minus and then you've got your brackets with a negative 5 inside. If now, we already said if there is no sign, it means multiplication. But in this case, I don't have a number there either. If there is no number, it means that it is 1. So in this case, this means negative 1 times negative 5. So you are multiplying what is inside the brackets by negative 1. So then what you're actually going to end up with is a positive answer, because it's negative times negative is positive. So if whatever is inside is negative, you'll end up with a positive answer. And then 1 times 5 means that whatever, the number part of this is going to stay the same because you're just multiplying it by 1. So that gives us positive 5. So if you don't see anything except for a minus sign outside the bracket, in front of the bracket, then that means that it is minus 1 that is being multiplied into that bracket. Okay. So now we're going to go and have a look at what happens when we are multiplying more than two integers. So, so far we have been multiplying two integers together. We've had things like uh, negative 10 times negative 5, we've had 3 times negative 8, so we've had some where we had positive times negative, some we had negative times positive, sometimes we had negative times negative. But what happens when you have more than two integers that are being multiplied together? So that's what we're going to be looking at now. Okay, so let's have a look at an example where we're just using the number negative 1 because when you multiply 1 by 1 by 1 you're still going to get 1. So we're not going to be worrying about the actual number part of it, we're just going to be worrying about the sign part of it. Okay, so when we're multiplying together more than two integers, let's see what happens with our signs. So if I've got negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 
times negative 1. Okay, let's just keep it like that. Okay, now, in this case, you can see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 negative 1s over here. I'm multiplying together an even number of negative negatives. Now, this is important because if you take this over here and you say, okay, well, we know that when we multiply a negative by a negative, it gives us a positive. So these over here are going to multiply together to give me positive 1. And these over here are going to multiply to give me positive 1. And these over here are going to multiply together to give me positive 1. So when you have an even number, of negatives, what happens is the negatives group together in pairs and they all multiply by each other and you end up with a negative result or a positive result from each pair. Then if we multiply all of those pairs together, so I've got the positive 1 times the positive 1 times the positive 1, when I multiply positives together we just get a positive answer. So our answer is going to be positive 1. Okay, so if you've got an even number of negatives, they group together in pairs, and each pair will give us a positive answer, and when we multiply those all together, we get a positive answer. Okay, the, the, uh, the absolute value part of it, where we're multiplying the numbers together, that still works the same as it did when we had uh, only two integers that we were multiplying together, so we would then multiply all of the numbers together, and we would see what, they, what we get for all of them multiply all the absolute values together and we would see what we would get for the absolute value part of our integer, the number part of our integer. Okay, but in terms of the sign part, if there is an even number of negatives, the negatives will group together in pairs and each pair will end up giving us a positive result, so our final answer will be positive. But now let's have a look at what happens if we multiply together an odd number of negatives. Okay, so first of all, we'll start off with negative 1 times 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 negative 1. Okay, so over here, I have got, again, in this case, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so I can say, okay, so these two will group together and they will give me positive 1. These two will group together to give me positive 1. These two will group together to give me positive 1. But any time that you've got an odd number of minuses, there will always be one left over that will not be able to group together with another negative, giving you a positive answer. So you will always have that negative left over, which means that when you take all of these and you multiply them together and you get a positive result, you're going to end up multiplying it by a negative as well, which will still end up giving you a negative answer in the end. Okay, so this is going to give us positive 1 times positive 1 times positive 1 times negative 1. And when we multiply those together, we are going to end up with a negative answer because we have still got one negative left over. And if I multiply this negative by any of those, it'll make them negative. Okay, so when we are multiplying an odd number of negatives, we end up with a positive answer. Or at, when we are multiplying an even number of negatives, we end up with a positive answer. When we multiply an odd number of negatives, we end up with a negative answer. Okay, so now let's just recap that quickly. So when you are multiplying together an even number of negatives, you get a positive answer. And when you're multiplying together an odd number of negatives, you get a negative answer. Okay, 
So now let's go and have a look at an example where we are actually multiplying together more than two integers. So in this example, I have got negative, negative two multiplied by positive three, multiplied by positive two, multiplied by negative four. Okay, so I'm going to start off just like I was doing when I had just two integers. My first step is to identify my sign. But in this case, I need to now go and count how many minuses there are that are being multiplied together all uh, together. So I've got one. Remember, this minus over here is actually negative one. So even though we can't see the, the one, it is with negative one. So I have to count that minus. So there's a minus over there. That's one, two, three three. These ones are positive, so they don't matter. Now, when we are counting the number of negatives to determine the sign, the number of positives doesn't make any difference between because when we multiply by positive, it doesn't actually change anything. It's only when we have negatives that are being multiplied that we have the potential of the sign changing. Okay, so we don't need to worry about how many positives there are. It's only the number of negatives that we have to worry about. So I've got negative multiplied by negative two, multiplied over here by negative four. So there are three negatives altogether. That is an odd number. So I'm going to have a negative answer. Once I've done that, I then go and multiply together my absolute value. So this is one. I don't have to worry about it because any anything multiplied by one stays one. Then I've got two times three is six, times two is 12, times four is 48. So for that question, you get negative 48. Negative because there's an odd number of negatives being multiplied together. And 48 because when I multiply my absolute values together, I end up with 48. Okay, so that's what you should get for that example. So now I'm going to give you a few to do for yourself. Okay, so here you've got three examples that you're going to be working on. I'm going to give you one minute to work on each of these different examples. So one minute for the first one. Okay, so you should be done with that one, so let's go through it. So for question A, we had negative 6 times negative 2 times 1 times negative 2 times negative 1. So the first thing we're going to do is, ident is identify our sign by counting how many negatives we are multiplying together. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 negatives. So because it's an even number, our answer is going to be positive. Then we multiply together all of our absolute values. So we've got 6 times 2 is 12 times 1 doesn't change times 2 is 24 and times 1 again doesn't change. That's going to be 24. It's positive 24. So that's what you should have got for question A. Right, now I'm going to give you one minute again to work on question B.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So you had negative 7 times negative 1 times 8 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Okay, so first of all, let's identify our signs. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 negatives. It's even, which means that my answer is going to be positive. And then I've got 7 times 8. I don't have to worry about any of those ones because when I multiply by 1, my answer is not going to change. So I'm just going to be multiplying the 7 and the 8 together and that gives me 56. So that's going to be positive 56 for question B. Right, then question C, you have a minute to work on this one as well. Okay, so in question C, we had 1, we had 1 times negative 2 times 1 times 3 times negative 1 times 2 times negative 1. So first, our sign, we have got 1, 2, 3 negatives, so it's odd, so our answer is going to be negative. Then I've got, again, I don't need to worry about all the ones, I'm just going to be looking at the other numbers. So I've got 2 times 3 times 2, so that's 2 times 3 is 6, times 2 is 12. So that gives me negative 12. So for that question, question C, you should have got negative 12. Okay, so that is multiplying integers. When you have an even number of integers, or an even number of negatives rather, you get a positive answer. When you have an odd number of negatives, you get a negative answer. And once you've identified your sign, all you need to worry about doing is multiplying all of those absolute values together to give you your final answer. Now let's go and have a look at dividing integers. Okay, so now for dividing integers, the good news is our rules basically stay the same. Okay, so when we are dividing integers, if you've got a positive divided by a positive, which is what you're used to, okay, so if you say 12 divided by 6, they're both positive, you end up with a positive answer too. Okay, so positive divided by positive is positive. Okay, so that's normal. If you have a positive divided by a negative, then, just like with multiplication, if you have an odd number of negatives, so a positive divided by negative, there's only one negative here, you end up with a negative answer. If you have a negative divided by a positive, then, just like with multiplication, you end up with a negative answer. So one negative, one positive gives a negative answer. And then if you have a negative divided by a negative, just like with multiplication, if you have two negatives, you get a positive answer. So for multiplication and division, remember multiplication and division actually work together, okay? So if I give you an example like this and I say, well, we know now that two times negative three is equal to negative six. Remember that division is the inverse operation for multiplication. So I should be able to say, if I know that that is true, then I should be able to say that 6 or negative 6 divided by 2 should give me, if I have this one divided by that one, I should get that answer. So that's negative 3. Or I should be able to say negative 6 divided by negative 3, that one divided by that one, should give me that answer equals 2. So here I've got a negative divided by a positive giving me a negative answer and here I've got a negative divided by a negative giving me a positive answer. So that just is reinforcing the fact that we that the rules for division are going to be the same as the rules for multiplication in terms of the number of negatives. If you've got an odd number of negatives you're going to end up with a negative answer. If you've got an even number of negatives that are being divided, you're going to end up with a positive answer.
Okay, so let's go and have a look at an example. Okay, so for question, for this example, we've got negative 12 divided by negative 2. Now remember, the fraction line means division. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, just like with the multiplication, is identify our sign. We see, okay, I've got a negative divided by a negative that makes a positive. So it's going to be positive, and then 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, so just like with multiplication, our first step is identify our sign by looking at the signs of what you are working with in your question over here. And then you divide the absolute values, um, the top one divided by the bottom one, or if it's written like this, the first one divided by the second one. Okay, so that is how you're going to work out your division with integers. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a couple of examples that you're going to do for yourself. Okay, so here we have got question A, B, C, and D, and I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these questions. Okay, so let's go through that ex those examples. So for question A, you had negative 15 divided by 3. So first we identify our sign. We see we have a negative divided by a positive. That gives us a negative answer. So it's going to be negative. And then we divide our absolute value. So 15 divided by 3 gives me 5. So for that example, you should have got negative 5 as your answer. For question B, you have 100 divided by negative 5. So again, it's a, neg a positive divided by negative. So you're going to get a negative answer. And then 100 divided by 5 is 20. Then over here for question C, we had negative 48 divided by negative 6. This time a negative divided by negative is a positive. And then 48 divided by 6 is 8. So you should have got positive 8 for question C. And then for question D, we have negative 45 divided by 3. A negative divided by positive is negative. And then 45 divided by 3 is 15. So that's what you should have got for that example. Right, so that is how we do multiplication and division when we're working with integers. Remember, the number of negatives is important. You have to see how many negatives there are. If there's an odd number of negatives, your answer is going to be negative. If you have an even number of negatives, your answer is going to be positive. And then if you're multiplying, you multiply your absolute values together to get the number part of your answer. And if you're dividing, you divide your absolute values together to get your your the number part of your answer as well. Okay, so that is multiplication and division using integers. 
Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.